So if you've tried to move a row of data in Google Sheets using App Script, but your data contains smart chips, you've probably noticed that pretty much all the methods mangle or destroy the smart chips in the process because fortunately for some reason, Google's not updated App Script yet to recognize or maneuver smart chips. Now there is a method in App Script called copy to that will actually preserve the smart chips. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. We'll change the status to warm and we'll move it here and look at those smart chips. They're beautiful, still intact. And so hang on for the rest of this video as I walk you through building this script line by line. All right, so let's jump right in and create our script by going to extensions and app script. And then once this is created, we'll go ahead and name our project. And then we're going to reuse this, but we're going to rename it to on edit instead. That's a native app script function that runs every time you edit your Google Sheet. And so from that, this E represents the event object, which contains data about what was changed. And so we can grab some stuff from this, for example, the range, and we do that by E dot range, and we're assigning it to this variable called range. And then we can do stuff like get the source sheet and we'll do e dot source dot get active sheet. And then we can get a few other things like the column and we'll do that from the range get column. The row range dot get row. And then finally we can get the value as well range dot get value. Now we have all that we need to get going. And so first of all, what we need to do is determine when we want this to run, because at this point, this function is going to run every time you make an edit on your Google Sheet, and we don't want to be moving stuff willy nilly. So we need to determine when we want things to move. And so as this example, all of our tabs are fine, so we don't need to make any restrictions there. But we do want to make sure we're only moving when the status is updated, because that's going to be our condition here. And then we want to move it to the status that was selected. So as one example, though, we have cold here on the cold tab. And so we may not want to try to move it to the cold tab from the cold tab. And so we actually do have one. So any conditions we're going to put inside a if statement. And so let's start with that one. So if value is not equal to source dot get name and this is getting the name of our active sheet and so the val is going to be the value that was edited or selected so if we select a cold that would be our val and so if a val is not equal to our source get name then we can go ahead and proceed i'm going to add some curly braces there and everything inside of this will run if whatever we put in here evaluates to true so we're going to add some conditions and we add conditions by doing either and two ampersands, and that means and, or we can do two pipe symbols, and that means or. And so you want to use these judiciously, and you can use kind of like math, you can use parentheses to link things together. And so, if, for example, if you wanted this and that or something else, then you wrap those. So if you want to value the not equal source name and something else or another condition, then you do it like that. So you have your second condition here and your alt condition there. All right, so enough about conditions for the moment. Let's go ahead and write this. We're going to keep it pretty simple. So we're going to make sure our column is one. And notice this is a not equals. So a exclamation point and equals is not equal, does not equal. And then two equals is a comparative. And so if you notice up here, we have just a single equals and that's assignment. And that means whatever this was is now assigned to, in this case, call. And so this double equals is a comparative. You can use a triple equals and that does type as well. But typically in this case, I'm not using that. All right. And so finally, let's also not trigger if maybe they deleted it. In other words, if val is not equal to blank. And so when you just do a 
two quotes or two single quotes that evaluates to blank. And so this is just saying we didn't select a blank. All right, so that should do it for our if statement. And now we can go ahead and get prepared to move our row. And so first of all, I'm going to get our spreadsheet. And this is just going to make it a little easier with our auto suggest. So we're getting this auto suggest here. And so it works a little better when you do it this way. So I'm actually going to, even though we have our source sheet here, I'm going to get it again. I'm going to get do sheet by name. And I couldn't see my auto selection, so I got the wrong one. Get sheet by name. There we go. And then I'm going to do source dot get name. And so this may seem a little repetitive, but when you do source and you hit period, you don't get any of those suggested. But if we do sheet now, we get our suggestion. So it just helps with the syntax to make sure you're not making any errors there. So let's go ahead and get our target sheet as well. And this is going to be ss dot get sheet by name. And this will be val. So the value is what we selected is where it's going. So if we select warm, for example, it's going to the warm tab. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to add here just to help streamline things as I'm doing my testing. And so we have, for example, a blank row here. And then here we don't. So I wanted to set up so it'd work regardless. The only caveat here is like, for example, if we add a checkbox or a star rating and we have some basically blank rows. But have an element like this. If you click on this, you can see there's actually a value in that cell. Same thing with that star rating. It's actually zero. And so what happens is typically what you do is something like a get last row method to append data. But this is not a blank row according to the app script. And so what would happen is it would add another row and put the data down here. And so sometimes people get confused when if you have a bunch of checkboxes, for example, um, with blank rows, and then you use a script and it moves it. And the reason why you don't see it immediately, if you scroll down to the bottom of that sheet, you're going to see it tucked there in the bottom. And the reason is because some of these things actually have a value attached. And so what I set this up to do is we're just going to set up so you don't have to have any blank rows. It will automatically add them for you. So the way we do that is we can say if target sheet dot get last row equals target sheet dot max rows, then we're going to insert a row. And the reason why we're doing this also is because if we have something like this and it needs to insert a row, this method it just has a hang up. And so this is the, the way I discovered to address it. So we're going to do insert row after target sheet get last row. And so if you have checkboxes and stuff, this is still going to end up adding another row. So I'm just going to leave this here for now so you can see how it's going to work. But ultimately, when you use this, you can either leave these blank, so completely blank, just like this, and then it'll work. And it'll drop them in those blank rows because when it copies them, it's going to copy those elements anyway. Otherwise, um, you can just leave it like what we have here with hot with no extra rows. Now, one more thing we're going to add here before we proceed is we're actually going to set this target row before we get to the end. And so I'm going to do let target row target sheet dot get last row. Plus one, and that's just going to get our last row before we determine if we have any other issues. Now we can come down here and finish our final thing. And this will be our actual copy too. So sheet dot get range. And then we already have our row sitting right up here. So row, first column, one row, and then our number of columns will be just sheet dot get last column there to automatically get it. And then we can now do our copy to method. And so if you open this up, you can see here you just need to select a destination range and you only need the top left cell. So it gives you an example here where you can parse through the different ideas there. So what we're going to do is our target sheet, get range, and then we have our target row here now. And so we're going to do target row and the first column. And now that's in place. And then we can add two more optional things here. One is clearing out 
this status. And so if I select warm here, it's going to move it to this warm sheet. But it'll still have that warm here. And so if I want to reset that, I can do this target sheet, get range, target row one and clear content. And then the last thing we're going to delete the row we just copied from the original. And so we're just going to do it like this. All right, so that is it for the script. The only other thing we're going to add here is just something to make authorization a little clear. And the way we're going to do that is forward slash asterisk at only current doc asterisk forward slash and we're done. And so now we're going to authorize the script. And the way we do that is by clicking run. And this is the only time we need to do this. Every time from then on, this on edit again, like I said at the beginning, is a native function. So it's going to run every time the Google Sheet is edited. So let's do this one time run to authorize. Is this required? Select our account. And then this is a simplified one that we just added. So instead of having that warning, it goes straight to our allow. And then we're going to have this error here, but this is perfectly normal because we're running the on edit from the script editor and it's expecting something to be here, but it only is when it's running in its native context, which is when we edit this. So we're all good to go. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and test this out. So we're going to go ahead and select warm. And there it moved it to warm and then we can move it to hot. And then it moved it to hot and then we can move both of these back to cold. I can move that one back to cold. One is done. I can move this one back to cold. And there we go. So you can see here where we have this row with stuff in it is kind of messing stuff up. So we can just leave it blank like that. And so if you notice this warm one worked fine when it had a completely blank row like this, but it's when you add the checkbox and other things that it messes up. So other than that, everything is working great. And so make sure to check out the link in the description below to make a copy of this Google Sheet and script. And then make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.